everyone's people. There were mother deer, father deer, baby deer too. And lots of young boy deer and girl deer like you. Yes, there once was a forest a long way from here. Twas the day before Christmas and all through the hills those young deer were playing, enjoying the spills of skating and coasting and climbing the willows. And hopscotch and leapfrog, protected by pillows to save their deer seats, being scratched up and torn in leaps that might land on another deer's horn. Now every so often they'd stop to call names at one little deer not allowed in their games. Ha ha, look at Rudolph, his nose is a sight. It's as red as a beet, twice as big, twice as bright. While Rudolph just wept, what else could he do? He knew that the things they were saying were true. Where most reindeer's noses are brownish and tiny, poor Rudolph's was red, very large and quite shiny. In daylight it dazzled, he sure hated that. At night time it glowed like the eyes of a cat, and putting dirt on it just made it look muddy. Oh boy, was he mad when they nicknamed him Ruddy. Although he was lonesome, he always was good, obeying his parents as good reindeer should. That's why on this day, Rudolph almost felt playful. He hoped that from Santa, soon driving his sleigh full of presents and candy and dollies and toys for good little animals, good girls and boys, he'd get just as much. And this is what pleased him as the happier, handsomer reindeer who teased him. So as night and a fog hid the world like a hood, he went to bed hopeful. He knew he'd been good. While way, way up north on this same foggy night, old Santa was packing his sleigh for its flight. This fog, he complained, will be hard to get through. He shook his round head, and <laughs> his tummy shook too. Without any stars or a moon as our compass, this extra dark night is quite likely to swamp us. To keep from collisions, we'll have to fly slow. To keep our direction, we'll have to fly low. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight. 
in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys and girls' faith would be shaken if we didn't reach them before they awaken. Come Dasher, come Dancer, come Prancer and Vixen, come Comet, come Cupid, come Donner and Blitzen, be quick with your suppers, get hitched in a hurry, you too will find fog a delay and a worry. And Santa was right, as he usually is. The fog was as thick as a soda's white fizz. Just not getting lost needed all Santa's skill. With street signs and numbers more difficult still, he tangled in treetops again and again and barely missed hitting a four-motored plane. He still made good speed with much twisting and turning as long as the street lamps and house lights were burning. At each house, first noting the people who lived there, he'd quickly pick out the right presents to give there. By midnight, however, the last light had fled where even big people had then gone to bed. Because it might wake them, a match was denied him. Oh my, how he wished for just one star to guide him. Through dark streets and houses, old Santa fared poorly. He now picked the presents more slowly, less surely. He really was worried, for what would he do if folks started waking before he was through? The air was still foggy, the night dark and drear, when Santa arrived at the home of the deer. A ledge that he tripped on while seeking the chimney gave Santa a spill and a painfully skinned knee. The room he came down in was blacker than ink, he went for a chair and then found it, a sink. The first reindeer bedroom was so very black, he tripped on the rug and fell flat on his back. So dark that he had to move close to the bed and squint very hard at the sleeping deer's head before he could choose the right kind of a toy, a doll for a girl or a train for a boy. But all this took time and filled Santa with gloom while slowly he groped toward the next reindeer's room. The door he just opened when to his surprise, a dim but quite definite light met his eyes. The lamp wasn't burning. The glow came instead from something that lay at the head of the bed. And there lay, but wait now, what would you suppose? The glowing, you guessed it, was Rudolph's red nose. Oh, this room was easy. This one little light let Santa pick quickly the gifts that were right. How happy he was till he went out the door. The rest of the house was as dark as before so black that it made every step a dark mystery. But then came the greatest idea in all history. Santa went back to Rudolph and started to shake him, of course very gently, in order to wake him. And Rudolph could scarcely believe his own eyes. You just can imagine his joy and surprise at seeing who stood there so real and so near, while telling the tale we've already told here. Poor Santa's sad story of dark and delay. The fog and the blackness and losing the way. The horrible fear that some children might waken before his complete Christmas trip had been taken. And you, he told Rudolph, may yet save the day. Your wonderful forehead may yet pave the way for a wonderful triumph. It actually might. Old Santa, you notice, was extra polite to Rudolph regarding his wonderful forehead. To call it a big shiny nose would sound horrid. I need you, said Santa, to help me tonight, to lead all my dear on the rest of our flight. And Rudolph broke out into such a big grin, it almost connected his ears and his chin. A note to his folks, he dashed off in a hurry. 
I've gone to help Santa, he wrote. Do not worry, said Santa. My sleigh I'll bring down to the lawn. You'd stick in the chimney and flash he was gone. pranced out through the door, very gay, and took his proud place at the head of the sleigh. The rest of the night, well, what would you guess? Old Santa's idea was a brilliant success, and brilliant was almost no word for the way that Rudolph directed the deer and the sleigh. In spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low, and made such good use of the wonderful glow from Rudolph's uh, forehead at each intersection that not even once did they lose their direction. While as for the houses and streets with a sign on them, they merely flew close so that Rudolph could shine on them. To tell who lived where and just what to give whom, they'd fly by each window and peek in the room. Santa knew always which children were good and minded their parents and ate as they should. So Santa selected the gift that was right while Rudolph's uh, forehead gave just enough light. It all went so fast that before it was day, the very last present was given away. The very last stocking was filled to the top just as the sun was preparing to pop. The sun woke the reindeer in Rudolph's hometown. They found the short message that he'd written down, then gathered outside to await his return. And were they excited, astonished, to learn that Rudolph, the ugliest deer of them all, Rudolph the red-nosed, bashful and small, the funny-faced fellow they'd always called names and practically never allowed in their games, was now to be envied by all far and near. For no greater honor can come to a deer than riding with Santa and guiding his sleigh, the number one job on the number one day. The sleigh and the reindeer soon came into view, and Rudolph still led them as downward they flew. Oh boy, was he proud as they came to a landing right where his handsomer playmates were standing. These bad deer, who used to do nothing but tease him, would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier they had been bad when Santa said, Rudolph, I never have had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you at fighting black fog and at guiding me through. By you, last night's journey was actually bossed. Without you, I'm certain we'd all have been lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief on future dark trips as Commander-in-Chief. But Rudolph just blushed from his head to his toes until his whole fur was as red as his nose. The crowd first applauded, then started to screech, Hooray for our Rudolph, and we want a speech! But Rudolph was bashful despite being a hero and tired. His sleep on the trip totaled zero. So that's why his speech was just brief and not bright. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And that's why whenever it's foggy and gray, it's Rudolph the Red Nose who guides Santa's sleigh. Be listening at Christmas, but don't make a peep, cause that late at night, children should be asleep. The very first sound that you'll hear on the roof, provided there's fog, will be Rudolph's small hoop. And soon after that, if you're still as a mouse, you may hear a swish as he flies round the house and gives enough light to give Santa a view of you and your room. And when they're all through, you may hear them call as they drive out of sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. I'm Frosty the Snowman. Oh, Frosty! Yeah! 
Now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. And don't forget Rudolph. No, don't forget Rudolph. I won't forget Rudolph. He's our leader, you know. So up to the rooftop the reindeer soon flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. Down the chimney he came with a leap and a bound. He was dressed all in fur and his belly was round. He spoke not a word. But went straight to his work And filled all the stockings Then turned with a jerk And laying his finger aside of his nose Then giving a nod up the chimney he rose But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to all And to all good there. This is Paul Wing. Do you remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? And his first exciting Christmas? Remember how Santa found Rudolph that dark, foggy night, and Rudolph's red nose became Santa's front light? 
They filled all the stockings before it was day with Rudolph a hero for leading the way. Well, when that long, hard Christmas Eve trip was finally over, Santa said, Oh, I'm so tired, Rudolph. Let's go away for a long rest. And Rudolph said, Oh boy, would I love a vacation with you. Besides, my legs ache and my nose is tired too. Now, of course, the first thing Rudolph did was to ask his mother and father if he could go. And when they said yes, off went Rudolph with Santa. And to make sure they would finally really rest, they went far from Santa's North Pole office, way down to the South Pole. After a nice long vacation, back they came, up, up, up to the North Pole. Rudolph went to see his mother and father, and Santa went back to his own North Pole toy factory. But when Santa tried to open his door, it would hardly budge. My goodness, what is in that room? Santa backed up and ran right at the door and bounced his big round tummy so hard against it that he bounced right off it. And he bounced and bounced and bounced like a rubber ball. My goodness! Then he bounced against the door once more. And the door popped open. From floor to ceiling, and from wall to wall, the room was filled with letters written by children to thank Santa for their presence. How will I ever be able to read them all? I've only a small lamp in my office, and the North Pole night is six months long. But then Santa had an idea. Say, Rudolph could help me read, and his shining red nose could help light up the room. I'll phone him right away. Hello, Rudolph? Santa told Rudolph what the trouble was. Rudolph came right away and started to help Santa read those piles and piles of letters. Then suddenly, there were tears in Rudolph's eyes and one of them rolled down to his red nose. Hold on here, Rudolph. What's the matter? This letter's the saddest I ever have read. I'm crying so, Santa. You read it instead. Dear Santa, you didn't find us Christmas Eve because Daddy's circus moved to a different town every day. Our stockings were empty on Christmas morning, and we didn't get any presents at all. Please, Santa, try hard to find us next Christmas. Mama and Daddy say we've been very good and deserve some nice presents. With love, from Jimmy and Joan. When Santa finished reading the letter, he was sad, too. And Rudolph said, Oh, Santa, I'm thinking of next Christmas when we don't want to miss those two children again. We'll have to find out where their circus will be. And the very best person to find them is me. Because whether it's nighttime or whether it's day, I'll have my red nose to help light up the way. Off went Rudolph at once to find Jimmy and Joan. He headed for the town of Twinkle Twinkle that their letter was mailed from. But when he arrived there, the people said, That silly little circus, it was terrible. Nobody wanted to see it. It only stayed here one day. It left the town of Twinkle Twinkle and went on to Twinkle Twinkle. At Twinkle Twinkle, the people said that the silly little circus had gone on to Twinkle Twinkle. And at Twinkle Twinkle, the people said it had gone on to Twinkle Twinkle. On and on went Rudolph until he came to the town of Double Double Twank Twank. And there he heard a very silly thing. A circus band. But oh, what a silly circus band. Instead of lots of lions and tigers that roared real loud like this, the silly circus had only one silly old toothless tiger that yawned like this. Instead of shooting a man from a cannon, 
They shot a tiny mouse from a pop gun. Rudolph wandered through the silly circus, shaking his red nose sadly. Then suddenly he saw two children. Joan, look! Isn't that Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer? Oh, Jimmy, I'm sure it is Rudolph. And I think he's looking for us. Well, they were the little boy and girl who had written that sad letter, as you must have guessed. And they showed Rudolph the rest of the silly circus. It's no wonder nobody buys tickets. It's no wonder no town ever wants us to stay more than just one day. I can't tell you where we'll be next Christmas. Rudolph, if you and Santa don't find us next Christmas either, that'll be terrible. And Rudolph said... I don't know the answer. I almost could cry. I'll go and ask Santa. He's wiser than I. So Rudolph said goodbye and started back to the North Pole. That evening, when Rudolph stopped to rest in a dark forest, he heard some noises. That must be a rabbit, he thought. It's running so fast. That must be a turtle. It's clumping along so slowly. That must be a dog. That must be a cat. Canary want a cracker. That must be a parrot giving a cracker to a canary. And that must be the canary. It was so dark that Rudolph couldn't see the animals. But when he shined his red nose on them, was he surprised? Yes, Rudolph certainly was surprised, for the animal that ran as fast as a rabbit was a turtle. Ho, 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 sure I'm a turtle. And the animal that dragged along as slow as a turtle was a rabbit. <laughs> of course I'm a rabbit. The animal that barked like a dog <laughs> was a cat. And the animal that meowed like a cat <laughs> was a dog. The canary talked like a parrot. Canary want a cracker. And the parrot sang like a canary. <laughs> Rudolph looked at the other animals and said, You all look so sad, and you all sound so queer. Excuse me for staring, but why are you here? The canary who sounded like a parrot was the best talker, so she spoke up first. Ah, each of us has been stared at, laughed at, and teased ever since we were babies, just because we're a little different. Ah, look at me. I never learned to sing, only to talk. And the other canaries made fun of me. Ah! Then the parrot who sang like a canary said, Look at me. Which means I never learned to talk, only to sing. And the other parrots thought I was stupid. Then the cat who barked like a dog said, Look at me. <laughs> Which means because I barked like a dog, I frightened all the other cats so I didn't have any friends. Then the dog who meowed like a cat said, look at me. And that means all the other dogs barked at me and called me a sissy. The slow, slow rabbit said he could never keep up with his fast-moving friends. And the fast-running turtle tried hard to slow up, but he'd only trip and land on his back. And you know how much trouble it is for an upside-down turtle to get on his feet again. Sad and lonely, these little animals banded together in this forest. They were still a little sad and lonely, but at least they didn't laugh at each other. Then the canary who talked like a parrot said to Rudolph, Oh, as a matter of fact, you're a little different from other reindeer, too. Why don't you stay with us? Ah, after all, isn't your nose a little bit, uh, well, a little bit, uh... Rudolph smiled and said, you can't hurt my feelings. My nose is a sight. But it sure helped old Santa that dark, foggy night. I know how it feels to be teased just like you. But I've an idea. I know what to do to make each of you just as happy as me. First of all, I'll tell Santa. Then, boy, wait and see. 
Can you guess what Rudolph's wonderful idea was? When Rudolph told Santa about his idea, Santa said, That is a wonderful idea. Then Rudolph told the funny little animals the idea. And the cat who barked like a dog said, <laughs> Which means that is a wonderful idea. <laughs> then Rudolph told Jimmy and Joan the idea. And they said, Rudolph, that is the most wonderful idea we've ever heard of. What was the idea? Well, a few days later, Jimmy stood up in front of the silly little circus tent and shouted... <laughs> That was Rudolph's idea, to bring the funny little animals to the silly little circus. Long before Christmas, the silly little circus had become the grandest circus ever. And no matter what town they stopped in, Twinkle Twinkle, or Twinkle Twinkle, or Double Double Twank Twank, the circus stayed and stayed and stayed. The funny little animals were happy little animals now because no one teased them no matter how funny they sounded. And Jimmy and Joan were happy because their circus soon had enough money to buy a big brass band. Lions and tigers that really roared. Even enough to hire a man who was shot from a cannon. And Santa and Rudolph were happy, too. And Rudolph said to Santa one day, We won't miss those children this Christmas, I'll bet. Just listen to this from the Twonko Gazette. That wonderful circus that once was the worst will stay in our town until April the 1st. We'll know where to go and we'll know where to stop and fill both their stockings clear up to the top. And that's exactly what happened. Jimmy and Joan wrote to Santa and told him what they wanted for Christmas. On Christmas Eve, Rudolph led all the reindeer to the very address on the envelope because he knew that Jimmy and Joan would still be there. Santa filled up their stockings and brought each of them an extra present because they didn't get any the year before. And when it was all over, Santa said, Rudolph, you've made as many people happy on this, your second Christmas with me, as you did on your first. <laughs> Rudolph felt very proud, and he said, I hope you'll invite me to help you each year. The happiest moment allowed any deer is riding with you, sir, and guiding your sleigh, the number one job on the number one day, and calling to all as we drive out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> Snowflake dressed in a snow white gown Tap, tap, tapping at your window pane To tell you she's in town Here comes Susie Snowflake Soon you will hear her say Come out everyone and play with me I haven't long to stay If you want to make a snowman I'll help you make one, one, two, three If you want to take a sleigh ride The ride's on me Here comes Susie Snowflake Look at her tumbling down Bringing joy to every girl and boy Susie's come to town Thank you. 
gown. Tap, tap, tapping at your window pane to tell you she's in town. Here comes Susie Snowflake, soon you will hear her say, Come on, everyone, and play with me. I haven't long to stay. If you want to make a snowman, I'll help you make one, one, two, three. If you want to take a sleigh ride, the ride's on me. Here comes Susie Snowflake, look at her tumbling down. Bringing joy to every girl and boy, Susie's come to town. 